on the cold winter night of January 12, 1737, in Braintree, Massachusetts, John Hancock was born. He was the son of Reverend John Hancock and Mary Hawk Thatcher. He lived with his parents for the first seven years of his life, but at age eight, when his father passed away, he moved in with his aunt and uncle. His uncle was Thomas Hancock, and, was, and he was one of the richest men in Boston. Due to his business firm, House of Hancock, he was highly recognized. John learned much from his uncle in the firm. Historians say that Thomas Hancock was the most influential person in John's life. The principles that Thomas taught his nephew shaped him to be the revolutionary character he became. The life on Hancock Manor changed John into the man who a man like power and fine clothes. After graduating from Boston Latin School in 1750, he enrolled in Harvard University where he received his first degree in law. Upon graduation, John became a partner in his uncle's firm. He spent many years observing the way his wealthy business was ran. When his uncle became ill, he was given full partnership and a major role in the company. His uncle died a few years later. Thomas Hancock's will stated that John Hancock would inherit the business, Beacon Hill and Hancock Manor, and the house lives. In March 1765, John was elected to be on the board of selectmen, a position which his uncle occupied for many years. Originally, Hancock took a moderate stand on the Stamp Act, but over several months he changed his mind. He joined the boycott. Once the people of Boston heard that the English were repealing the Stamp Act, they elected John Hanton, I mean Hancock, into that Massachusetts House of Representatives. Soon after becoming a representative, he became partners with Sam Adams, a radical, revolutionary individual who was the exact opposite of John. After the boycott on the Stamp Act, the Bostonians thought that the English were done taxing. But soon after repealing the Stamp Act, they unleashed the Townshend Acts. British civilians were tired of paying extra taxes to pay for the French and Indian War. So the Townshend Acts were designed to make the colonists pay for the war. Hancock joined the Bostonians in the Townshend Act. His boat, Liberty, was used for smuggling goods. But the writs of assistance, which was the law that the British custom officers could search any boat without a search warrant, made it very difficult. On May 9, 1768, Hancock's ship arrived with Madria Line. The next morning, when the English custom officers searched the ship, they found 25 pipes of wine had been smuggled. They figured that John Hancock and his crew smuggled a lot of wine out that night they arrived because 25 pipes was only one-fourth of the ship's carrying capacity. Two different trials, one against the ship and one against him, occurred in the Vice Admiralty Court. After five months, the charges were dropped without an explanation. It is believed that he started the revolution and so his nickname was given, King of the Colonial Smugglers. The colonists grew angrier due to the Townshend Acts and it was obvious there was a riot afoot. The, this riot was known as the Boston Massacre. Hancock was not involved in the Boston Massacre, but after it, he led a committee to demand the removal of the troops. He told the king, I have 10,000 armed colonists ready to march into Boston if the troops do not leave. John Hancock became a man of fame and power. He was elected to many positions, including, in April 1772, John Hancock was elected Colonel of the Boston Cadets. November 5th, 1773, he was elected as the moderator of the Boston Town Meeting. And he was once again elected to the Massachusetts House of Representatives. Later, the same night of the Boston Town Meeting, the Boston Tea Party occurred. Hancock was not present during the riot, but applauded those who were. Parliament repealed the Tea Act and added the Boston Port Act, one of the coercive acts which were designed to strengthen jurisdiction over America. On December 1st, 1774, the Provincial Congress elected John Hancock as a delegate in the Second Continental Congress. Soon after he was chosen to be President of the Continental Congress, having multiple roles, everyone respected John Hancock and listened to what he has to say. It got to the point where the King wanted him arrested because his influential voice could sway the colonists against the British Empire. John had to stay at his childhood home in Lexington to avoid arrest. 1775, Gage received a letter 
that said to arrest all members of the Continental Congress for they have committed treason and rebellion. This act sparked the American Revolutionary War. August 28, 1775, Hancock married Dorothy Dolly Quincy. They had two kids, neither of which survived adult to adulthood. His daughter died ten months later due to an unknown causes. But his son, who was nine, died when he fell and hit his head while ice skating. As president of the Continental Congress, this was an excruciating amount of pressure on him to perform well and keep America safe. During the, the revolution, he wrote countless letters trying to gain support and, raise, and to raise money. On the Declaration of Independence, his signature is the largest. Some say it was because he wanted the king to see his name first and to show that John Hancock was standing strong during the revolution and would never back down. Although Hancock's finances suffered significantly from the war, he still donated to many organizations and was re-elected into the House of Representatives once again. On July 9, 1778, Hancock joined with seven other states in signing the Articles of Confederation. This was the first constitution of the United States. This document specified how the federal government was to be operated. Throughout John's whole life, he wanted to be a field officer, but he was not allowed due to his brilliant ideas and government work. When returning home in 1778, he was elected Senior Major General of the Massachusetts Militia. He commanded over 6,000 men in his campaign. January 29, 1785, he resigned as governor due to his health problems. Some critics say that he resigned because he knew trouble was coming and was having a political gout. This turmoil is known as Shays' Rebellion. He left his successor, James Bowdon, in charge. He was still very involved with the government, but was too sick most of the time to attend meetings and events. In 1789, he was asked to run for presidency. He knew George Washington had a unanimous popularity, so he decided to try for vice president. He was sadly disappointed when his own state didn't even vote for him. All the way up to the end of his life, John Hancock was a figurehead governor for the Massachusetts. He died October 8, 1793, at the age of 56. The day of Hancock's burial became a statewide holiday.